We're out camping at the gorge. Uh, we've been here for about 24 hours now. It's about time for a shower. So we're gonna just sort of take you through the water setup in the car, as well as the shower setup that we use. So we've got an outlet just on the bull bar here. Just a male hose fitting. And then we bring a hose with us with just two females on it. So that just clicks straight into there. So how that works is we've got the water tank in behind the middle row seats, which feeds to the back and the front of the car. The one that runs through the front of the car comes into the engine bay through a glind heat exchanger. So your engine has to be warm for that to actually heat the water and you control the temperature with your air conditioning temperature valve. The further hot you have it, the hotter the water. The further cold, the cooler the water. But you will need to, we're about to set this up to have some showers now. So we'll need to turn the car on, let it run for five minutes, get the engine temperature up so it can actually start heating the shower water. So we'll take you in there and show you what we use. We've just got the hose running from the bull bar into the Julka shower tent. So you've probably seen this tent before. It does come with a fly roof that actually covers over if you're gonna leave it up for a few days, but we're only gonna have it up for a few showers and then pack it away, so we're not worrying about it. It's a nice clear day. Basically, it's just two room pop-up shower. It's a hell of a lot easier than those, you know, folding ones we can never manage to get up. I don't think anyone can. So your first room's just a, uh, like a dry room where you'll leave your towel, uh, a few pockets. There's a net up the top here. You can leave your dry clothes in here, get, <coughs> get undressed, obviously close the door. Inside, it's all um, silver on the inside of the material. What that does is help prevent a silhouette being cast so you don't have to worry from people looking in, seeing you in the shower, I suppose. There's an internal door here, so you'll close that up before you have your shower to keep all the water in that room. And then open it back up when you're done. That can just pin out of the way. You come into the wet room, and how they've done it, it's quite smart. The floor is solid, so you're not standing on sand or dirt or anything like that but all the way around is a sealed mesh so all the water will just run straight off all the edges down in the corner you can see where the hose inlet actually comes in we've just got it hooked up to a dual car shower pole it's just basically a hose head fitting runs in there you control your water flow with this valve here that's off on off you've also got two windows one either side here that if it's a hot day you can leave open and get a good breeze through if you're worried about your privacy you zip them right up it's all the silver lining on the inside which definitely helps not to cast your shadow onto the wall There's also a shower caddy hanging up here with a lot of pockets just for your shower gel, shampoo, all that sort of stuff. Something to remember with the shower setup with this running off a heat exchanger is if you're in here having a shower, the water's flowing. If, say you're getting yourself wet so you can suds up, when you shut this off, the water in the line is actually stopped in the heat exchanger itself. So what can happen when you turn this back on, for the first few seconds, it will be very, very hot water. So just keep that in mind. Um, normally best if you do shut it off, when you turn it back on, have it pointing away from you just for a few seconds. 
just so you don't burn yourself, obviously. Then you step back out into the dry room, dry towel, dry clothes, get changed all in privacy, door shut, ready to go. So we'll take you through the car and how we sort of set up the water um, the best we can. We also carry extra water apart from the built-in water tank, uh, just sort of for the ease of use, but as well as carrying extra containers, if something were to happen to that and it were to leak, you'd be all out. So we'll take you around and show you through that. Okay, so around the back of the car here, we also carry two water jerrys. Depending on where we're going though, uh, sometimes we'll carry, obviously, extra diesel but for just weekend camping trips we'll just carry 40 litres of extra water we've just had these hoops cut in down here to line up with the outlets of the water so these are great just for washing your hands that sort of thing it's a lot easier to access just those taps also for washing up just run a bit of water straight in if not up here it's very easy just to flick on our water that's on. So as soon as that water pump's on, we do have an outlet on the rear bar. Just pop that cover off. So we can just turn that on. So in the middle of the car, behind the middle row seats in front of the drawers, we've got the built-in water tank. Up on top, there's a there's a fill point. There's also a point a bit lower down where you can just click in a hose to the mains, let it run uh, until it's full. Over this side, we've got a breather, just sort of dummied up one for now. I'll fix something up a bit better later on. Down the bottom of the tank is the ball valve, which controls the flow to everything. So we can just shut that off if there's any leaks throughout the system. But once we turn that on, it flows over to the water pump. After the water pump, it's into a T-piece with two smaller ball valves. One opens to the rear bar on that tap. The other one opens to the front, which runs through the heat exchanger and out the bull bar to the shower. So either way we can run water like connecting a hose if we really wanted to could wash off the car while we were set up <clears throat> okay so up the top there you can see the blue water line coming in from below into the heat exchanger basically just runs through a copper coil in there heating the water which taps into our actual coolant system to heat it. On the right hand side out the top is another blue water hose which runs across down behind the airbox along here and then out to the outlet in the bull bar. So you've just got fresh water running into that, goes through the copper coil which is heated from the engine temperature. By the time it comes out it's heated which is what I was saying, when you stop the flow, there's water actually trapped inside that heat exchanger. So when you start the flow again, that water is gonna be quite hot. So you just need to watch out for that with this system. But apart from that, it works very well. The best way to use it is obviously when you pull up for a camp, plug your shower in, have one straight away while the engine's still warm but it's no problem when you camp somewhere for a few days to start the car up. Good to let it run for a few minutes anyway, get some heat in it and have a nice hot shower. So that's a basic rundown of how we have our water set up in our car and also a shower set up. The Julka tent, we much prefer over those little ensuite tents, just easier to use. And having two rooms, one is a dry room, one is a wet room, really works a lot easier. And normally we just throw it up on the roof, doesn't matter if it's soaking wet, it's 
yeah, find a use. So thanks for watching this video. We'll have a few more coming out shortly, just on a few other things while we camp. But this one's just sort of to give you an idea of how you can set up a water system sort of in a wagon and still have the space. Uh, it is a bit harder than if you've got a ute, something like that. You can just have a huge water tank under the tray. But thanks for watching this one. We'll see you in the next one.